So Scott, are you going to give the uh, introduction first? Yes, I will. And we'll, we'll start that here in a moment. Nice. Hello everyone, this is Scott Roberts from Explore Scientific and the Explore Alliance, and it's my pleasure and honor to introduce uh, the group known as Space Shop 42. This is a group that I met while I was at Starmus in Yerevan, Armenia, and we are right now broadcasting live into Armenia. We have uh, members of that group uh, listening in on Zoom. It is broadcasting around the world in a simulcast. And um, we have uh, two very special guests, uh, but I want to introduce the, uh, one of the leaders of uh, Space Shop 42, with the fat, one of the founders, which is uh, 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 Vachik, and I might mispronounce, I'm so sorry, Katja Trian, is that correct? Yes. Vachik, okay, yeah. all right. Yeah. So yeah. let That's me go ahead and uh, uh, bring you on here. Uh, you are in Yerevan right now, is that correct? Uh, yes, I'm in year one right now. Let me translate what you said to the group. And then okay. Can continue. Uraman, I sort of say, how much Nergaz said Scott Roberts over export scientific in Nadir now. Yev, I said, 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 I Scotta uh, Yavies and the Pelang Star Sijamanak, which was now special special on Boston in Scotta and the Pelas of Sijamanak, whatever Meng, Irakanas to Meng, Alstadit Man, Mijotarma Garnium. Yev, you must go to Inskater Katsni. You can go with. Oh, okay, great, great. Okay, so. Um... Uh, you know, I, uh, again, it's uh, a, a, a pleasure to um, uh, be with you guys. This is uh, one of our first uh, uh, virtual workshops that we've done. Uh, there, there'll be a series of four of these programs. Uh, I'm working very closely with Vachik and um, some other uh, really talented uh, uh, astrophotographers. Uh, uh, our special guest, uh, uh, um, uh, Ocean, was at the Starmus astrophotography workshop uh, when we were all there together, and uh, he did a fantastic job. But I'll let uh, Vachik go ahead and introduce him, and then uh, we'll bring Ocean on. <clears throat> Uh, <laughs> Asadusan Kariche, if East Lusan Karner, Kawak, and Red Hamad Sansum, Katnet, had fantastic the Karneren. Yes, in case Oshinin and the Santipelem Astrophotography, Ursi Jamanak, Star Musi, Event Issue Janak Nerum. You have make me can in a Karner and Karel, either head. So I'm a social attack kiss cansney, Oshinamask about me. You can go ahead, Oshin. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much. Uh, I'm Oshin Zakarian from uh, California, USA, and uh, I was one of the participants in the Starmus program a few months ago. It was a very fantastic event and uh, combination of art and science. So this is what exactly I'm doing. So uh, basically today I want to talk for you about the basics of landscape astrophotography and to 
let you know which kind of cameras you can use and which lenses are more important to use to capture the best pictures of the constellations and the Milky Way. Uh, okay, yes, uh, I'm California. Uh, Okay, so let me just uh, start sharing uh, the screen for my presentation. Can you see that? Yes, we can see. My okay, okay. So today I'm talking about the basics of landscape astrophotography. Uh, uh, I started my photography career uh, when I was only 15, 16 years old, when I was a high school student, back in 1990s. Yes, I'm in career, I'm in the career, I'm in the career, I'm Եվ Արսկաստանում նույնում ամսաթերթի հետ համագործակցել եմ տարիների ընթացքում նույնումը ասկա ասկագիտական ամսաթերթն է որ դեր եւս տպագրվում է Արսկաստանում I think you don't need any translation right now okay okay <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah okay so and uh, one of my pictures was published in Astro magazine back in year 2000. I mean, uh, this was one of my first pictures that was published. It, it, it shows a picture of a mosque with the moonrise in one of the cities in Iran. Okay. Եվ այս տպագրությունը շատ ինձի գրգրեց, որ ավելի շարունակ եմ իմ աշխատանքը ասագիտական, լուսանկարչական հասպարեզում։ I think I will try to speak more Armenian. Maybe this is more convenient for you guys, right? Okay. Yeah. But if Scott presents broadcasts also for... Uh, for uh, yes, we, we are also we are also broadcast. Oh, okay, yes. so I will just talk in English. Okay, Let, let's do it. So, what is low light photography? Um, uh, astrophotography is part of low light photography. Low light photography uh, is the photography that when there is not enough light in the environment. Uh, yeah. uh, for example, uh, photographing a birthday party in the room when there is no light and just the candle lights are light. This is one of the fields of low light photography or photographing the highways on a, in a city to capture the trails of the car headlights. That's another type of low light photography because those photography, they need long exposure times. Uh, uh, so 
Perfect. So uh, basically, when the sun sets uh, in the horizon, in the western horizon, we are entering the, the territory of uh, low light photography until the next day when the, the sun rises up and another day is starting again. So that period of time, uh, for that period of time, we need long ex exposure times to capture the perfect light, light balance, and the good contrast uh, in our photographs. For that reason, to do the long exposures, uh, we need to do special techniques in photography. So, like for example, in the daylight, when you want to take a, a picture of a building in the broad daylight, when there is sun, you know, there's good enough amount of light, you just capture that picture in a very quick moment and you can hold the camera in your hands. Uh, but in astrophotography, because we are dealing with very, very low light situations, so we need to use a tripod to put the camera on the tripod in order uh, to prevent from shaking. And then we increase the exposure time to capture more and more starlight in, in our photographs. Uh, remains so here in this slide, you can see that a group of photographers are busy uh, with their tripods and the cameras in one of the deserts in the United States. And uh, they are using a uh, Red, red headlights, which uh, I have it here with me, you can see. Um, this uh, red headlight, actually, it's very useful during our for the night photography sessions. And uh, the important thing about this is that when you are using the red light uh, on your uh, to uh, do the stuff at night, it actually helps to keep the dark adaption. Because when there is dark, we, our eyes, they get used to the dark situation. Uh, and then if any bright light is turned on, it will actually disturb. So it's better idea to use the red lights during our uh, observational or photographic sessions during the night. So if you put the headlight on your head like this, you know, that it's much easier for you to have your both hands to work, work with the camera and do check the lens and do all the stuff for your photography. So rather than holding a torchlight. So 
So here you can see another example of uh, low light photography. This picture I took in Tehran, the capital city of Iran with the moon and the highways, you know. And so this kind of picture, it requires at least uh, 10, between five to 10 or 15 seconds of exposure time. We have a question. Does the red light disturb the camera during photography? Uh, sorry? Uh, we have one question uh, from the yes. audience. Does the red light disturb cameras during photography? photography The red light is used only when you want to do the setup on the camera and check check the details and then uh, when you want to take the actual picture you need to turn it off. So what do we see with our eyes in the night sky? So uh, basically to capture a decent and very good picture of the stars, we need to be in, in a dark place to, to find a dark location. And usually these dark locations, they are not inside the big cities. So that's why most of the astrophotographers, they travel to uh, suburban places or far away from the city to capture the Beautiful pictures of the Milky Way. Roman, what we see meant Kavanak as well as Sunaka Sunaneng, Kak to Savova to Savotuna, Meskangar, Yev, a drama of PC testing this Katina, but Kakanak, Avali Boot Teres, drama as well as Sanka Tichner, Sorapa Chana Portman, Avali Boot Teres, and Kanum, what we see and Tavits Kavanan, Katarel. What, perfect. What is light pollution? Uh, light pollution uh, these days, I mean, uh, there, are, there is increasing amount of lights in the cities and uh, everything is getting brighter and brighter. And unfortunately, this has a very bad effect on, on, the, on, on the observational and photographic uh, process that uh, uh, we are doing. So uh, in the major cities, because of the very bad light pollution, actually it's very hard to see all the stars in the sky because it actually takes away all the starlight and only some bright planets or the moon are visible in the big cities. So the light pollution um, is a very big problem. As you see in, in this picture here, uh, uh -huh. at the far end of this picture you can see a like a kind of uh, halo of a light in the mountains which is a kind of light pollution uh, but still there are some places that you can find especially in armenia uh, if you travel to to near the mount aragats you know uh, uh, you can find really dark spots and uh, so uh, the light pollution is very important when you want to uh, prepare for your travel, you need to check out the quality of the sky when you want to take the night pictures. Uh, 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 Ի Hayastanum, 
լավուսային ֆոն, հա, այսինքն նոր քիչ լուսային ապոխվածություն, որտա կարող է կանել աստղալ լուսանկարություն, ես կավելացնեի նաև դեպի վայոց ծորիկով, այտեղ շատ շատ լավ, շատ շատ քիչ է լուսային ապոխվածությունը, մենք գիրակի օրը այնտեղ էինք Even, so, uh, why, you, uh, even, uh, even, even in the center of the Yerevan city, I could see the constellation Orion. I mean, uh, even in, in, in the middle of the city in Yerevan, uh, it's much better than most of the cities in the world. So uh, it's the light pollution is not that much, fortunately, still. Yerevan, I can only show to sign off that what's she or Yerevan, not Orion, Mikama, Tsuna, Tesnel. <laughs> okay. Uh, the importance of long exposures to capture more details. Uh, I want to give you an example. So when um, astrophotography, when we talking about astrophotography, we are talking about long exposure times. If I want uh, to yes, give an me. example, I can uh, uh, tell you, for example, you want to gather the water in a rainfall, when the rain is coming, you want to gather water, you know, so you put a pot, like a, uh, a, a, like a box to gather the water. If you put it like for one minute, you will gather certain amount of water. If you put the pot under the rain, you will for another like 10 minutes or more longer time for like one hour, you will gather more water in that uh, pot. So, um, then so when we use the lenses for our astro astrophotography, actually the, t the, the job that the lens is doing is to gathering this starlight in a uh, duration of certain time, amount of time. Uh, well, and the night sky is the forgotten part of our nature and uh, so part of part of the reason that we are doing astrophotography and especially we are taking pictures of the landscape at night with the stars is to let the people know that this is the forgotten part of our nature which most people they don't pay attention because they are very very much involved in the city lives and ordinary lives so they don't put much time to travel to mountains and the villages to see the beauty of the night sky so the, the the joy of astrophotography is one of the joys of astrophotography actually is to share the pictures with other people to to show them these beauties in the night sky uh, Yeah. So as you see in this shot, which I took from Los Angeles, like uh, last year, uh, you can see the downtown uh, buildings in the horizon and the beautiful colors of the dusk after the sunset. And you can see the moon and some bright planets in the sky. And that little uh, line, the Gatsika, that little line is a, a helicopter that was passing in the field. So these kind of pictures, they require just few seconds of exposure and you can easily do it in, in the big cities. Այս նկարը լոս անջելեսի պատկերնա, ոտեղ որ տեսնում եք լուսինը, ոլորակներ են երևում պայց արխունաև, այս կարմիր կծիկը, որը որ երկնքով անցնող ուղաթիրի հետքնա, 
Այսպիսի նկարներ անելա շատ հեշտա քաղաքային պայմաններում մի քանի վարկյան պահաժամով կարող էք նկարներ ստանալ այդ քաղաքում։ Yeah, I will talk about more details about the lenses and the camera setups in the next presentation. So I will pass to the next slide. Hajjort slideerum suts kata oshina the inchpisi inchpisi linzaner yev inch camera setiner inch camera kalkavorum ner bet kalvetner vor pisi pisi nekader anel. This picture is from Griffith Observatory in Los Angeles and. Uh, don't worry, this is not a fire in the forest. Uh, these lights are from the parking lot. And uh, in night photography, we are dealing with different light sources in the landscape. Uh, so sometimes uh, there are tungsten lightings, the same lights that you use in your homes, you know, you they, they have the yellow color. And sometimes there are fluorescent lamps which produce green color which you can see at the right of the picture, there are some green color in, in the shot. So artificial uh, lights, they produce different colors in the landscape photography. Uh, Griff <laughs> The beautiful Lake Sevan in Armenia, which is one of my most favorite uh, spots to photograph, and uh, surprisingly, it has a very, very clear sky. And uh, um, even even though that there are so many uh, restaurants and like hotels, everything all around the lake, but still, uh, the sky it's really good for. Uh, both our observational and uh, photography sessions. So this picture I took uh, without any uh, special lighting, just, just there was this light coming from the right side from a hotel that uh, put light on the church. And uh, the, the exposure is 30 seconds. Um, uh, lige, uh, Okay, so now I want to just briefly talk about the planning uh, photography session, how we have how we plan a photography session and what are the basics. Uh, so the first important thing is to have a basic knowledge of the night sky. So you have to know what you are going to photograph. That's why most of the nighttime photographers that actually they are astronomers they create more meaningful pictures uh, 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 it, it's it's better for night photographers to no, have the basic knowledge of the night sky because because they can create better compositions in their photographs. 
լավ կլինի, որ իմանալ մասնական դիտելիքներ, ոտև հետաքրքիր սուգատություններ կարող է կարելի աստեղծել կիշերային երկնքի և տեսարանների։ So I can give you an example. So if if any photographer, they don't know like the names of the stars or the main stars in any constellation, they they might be in a very good location to photograph, but they they might end up getting a, a not a good framed picture of constellation Orion without showing the whole stars of the constellation in the in the picture. Uh, համաստեղությունների մասին, կաղա ինքը շատ լավ տեղում լինի, լուսանկարանի, բեց էտ լուսանկարի մեջ չի տեղավորվի ամբողջ համաստեղության ասեղ։ Ամբողջ համաստեղությունը, ու այդպես նկարը պճանա, բեց է So second second important point is the location selecting according to subjects of your photography. So for example, if you want to take a picture of the meteor shower or the shooting stars, you need to be in a place that it has open horizon. If you if you go um, inside the mountains, you you will lose most of the meteors and you cannot take uh, good pictures of all the shooting stars. Հաջորդը դա տեղանքի ճիշնեցությունն է, կախասն այնպես թե ինչ եք ուզում կարել պետքա տեղանքի ճիշնեցրեք, որնակի համար եթե պետքա կնեք աստղաթապ նկարելու մեծ որ մեջ համ, լավ կլնի, որ ընտրեք բաց տարասկ և որ հորիզոնը բաց է, ոչ թե լեռ Checking the weather and the moon phases, uh, it's very important. Uh, you need to check the weather through these uh, like weather forecast applications or check the uh, phases of the moon to, to see how bright is your night, night sky. Um, some, uh, yeah, go ahead. Հաջորդ կետը դա եղանակի և լուսնի պուլերի ստուգում է, պետք է նու տարբեր ծրագրեր կան, որ ինչոցով կարելի է եղանակը ստուգել, թե ինչկան անպամացա կամ ինչկան բացա երկինքը և նաև լուսնի պուլերը, որով պայմնալում So I talked already talked about the uh, number four. Number five is a, is making a checklist of the equipment and the cameras and the lenses and like the uh, camping stuff, everything that you want to take with you in your trip. Have a checklist of everything and uh, make sure that you are taking uh, all the stuff because in night photography, uh, sometimes unpredictable things they can happen and you need to be prepared. Հաջորդ գետը դա ծուցակ կազմելն է, թե ինչ գործիքը կազմելն է, պետք է տանեք ձեր հետ, ձեր ճանապավորության ժամանակ, երկու անգամ ստուկ եք, մի կան անգամ ստուկ եք, որ ամոզված ինեք ամենի ինչ վերսրել եք, որով ոտա կիշերային Uh, it's the same for the visual. Uh, yeah, exactly. Well. <laughs> yeah, I mean the the, uh, the photography and the visual observational uh, stuff stuff are just they are ju just the same. I mean, so uh, uh, number six, grab anything needed for camping and staying warm and awake, and like uh, camping gear or hot drinks or whatever you like, because this is the fun part of any astrophotography session. Հեծերորդ կետը վերսեք ամեն առաժեշտ պաները ձեր արշավական իդերը, որպիսի լինեք տակ, արդուն, կիշերային երկենքի տակ, որտեղ կաղացուրդ դինել տեղանքը, որպիսի հաջույք ստանակմապսյուն ունեցեք ձեր էտ բոլոր առաժեշտ կ In 
Astrophotography, basically, we can use uh, different types of uh, cameras and lenses. And uh, here I, I'm talking briefly about these uh, like uh, cameras and the lenses here. Okay, so uh, as you know, before the digital cameras, they, they arrived in the in photography world, uh, all the photographers, they were using the film or analog cameras like me. Uh, I started with film cameras for many, many years ago and Still, I'm using sometimes for some of my projects, I'm using the medium format uh, film cameras. And I will explain what is the difference and uh, very, very briefly actually, because we are not going to put much, much time in this. But anyway, for astrophotography, you can use any digital uh, DSLR or mirrorless camera that has the interchangeable lens option. So you can change the lenses. And also it has the long exposure or the bulb setting on the camera. Uh, and twenty twenty for the lenses, actually, the photo astrophotographers, I mean, landscape astrophotographers, they use a variety of lenses. So uh, here in, in here, you can see one of my lenses, which I use most of the time for most of my Milky Way pictures. This is a fisheye lens, uh, 14 millimeter f1.8, which is, uh, as you see, uh, it's uh, the, 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 the glass is pretty much big glass, so it, it has much better light powering, uh, light gathering power during the night. So uh, what the lenses that are more suitable for Milky Way pictures, they should be fast lenses. So they should have wider uh, f-stops. Uh, <coughs> Yeah. So the, the slow lenses actually, they can also be used for cer certain types of photography. So don't worry if you, if you have a lens which doesn't have this like uh, option, like the fast uh, f-stop option, uh, you shouldn't be worried about that because still you can use your other lenses to capture decent pictures of the, uh, like the uh, landscapes at night. But uh, the best thing, but the, the best lens that most photographers they use is the fast lenses for Milky Way shots. Uh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, uh, yeah, uh, Wachik is asking if what is the difference between the fast and slow lenses. So, the, the fast lenses actually they can capture the same amount of light in a shorter time. So that means if, uh, for example, if you use a F2, 14 millimeter F2 lens versus uh, 14 millimeter F4 lens, 
in the same amount of time, the F2 lens, it can capture double more detail in, this, in the sky, more uh, captures more data and more detail in the sky. Uh, uh, we have another questions. Uh, yeah. Uh, is asking more detail or more light. Okay, there, there is a questions above. Is Scott is asking is Photoshop uh, or is Photoshop or using photo editing software of your images deemed normal? Is, am I using like Photoshop or photo editing uh, softwares in my photography? That's the question, right? Can you confirm it? Yes. Uh, yeah, this so question I'm... actually is from someone uh, from Ben Crossway and uh, watching on Facebook right now. Oh, yeah. Of course. Uh, I um, mean, uh, Photoshop is an inevitable part of any like photography. But but I'm using Photoshop very very like little in my pictures. I just I'm just uh, actually color balancing my pictures and taking away the haze or the 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 like the smoky look of some some pictures depending on the location that I was photographing. And also uh, for Milky Way shots because every picture that comes out of the like every raw picture that comes out of the digital camera. It, it needs to be processed in order to achieve those fantastic contrast and like the corrected corrected colors in in the nebula or the galaxy you know so the the image processing for deep sky photography i mean the galaxy pictures or the nebula pictures it's, it's different a little bit different than like the one that i am using in my landscape astrophotography and uh, in my landscape actually i the, I just spent maybe three or four minutes to edit each picture because I'm just balancing the the levels and the the contrast or uh, the the color quality and the saturation. But I always try to keep the Milky Way pictures look very natural. I mean, I know some uh, photographers they prefer like the blue color Milky Way or the purple color Milky Way. You know, in the pictures. So it's a matter of taste. It's a personal taste, but my personal taste is like kind of golden brownish Milky Way pictures. Okay, let me translate. It's hard to remember. <laughs> so uh, Photoshop Photoshop Ahmed Nagar, I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have a lot of people who are in the world. I have that was a perfect translation. Thank you so much. Yeah. So and uh, we have we have more questions here. So if you don't mind, uh, uh, is is asking more detail or more light. It uh, uh, it is about the uh, fast fast. Fast and slow lenses, try to honest. Uh, yeah, the fast lenses they can capture more detail in a shorter amount of time. Arak, Arak, the lens anera, already shot the talnes, car went with Ansel Karchaman. Esther Irakanum, no, shot Louis, the shot the talle, the Hammer Motakana. Another question from Scott. Do you have any photos not edited? Uh, there was a question on what is a digital camera, but I answered that question myself. 
Um, uh, ben Crossway also wants to know, do you have any photos that are not edited? Okay, yes. what, if you could show a comparison of an unedited. Yes, I, I, yeah, the, in the next uh, slides, I have some shots that I have done with my film okay. cameras, which I have scanned mm -hmm. them. Of course, even, even with the film cameras, when you scan uh, each slide or negative, negative film or positive film, uh, when you trans uh, transport them into the laptop, you know, then we can do the editing too, but uh, you can see the, the 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 quality difference in the film photography and digital photography actually. So I will show you later in the next uh, shots. Uh, uh, oh, sorry, the... I hear I missed uh, something here. So, yeah. So the so uh, regarding the lenses, uh, uh, after the I finished about the fisheye lenses. Uh, there are there are wide angle lenses from twenty to twenty four. And then we have the uh, normal standard lenses, uh, 50 millimeter lens, which is a very important lens. And unfortunately, most of photographers, they ignore this lens. They prefer the wide angles, you know, but, but the normal lens, the 50 lens is one of the basics of any photography gear. So, uh, and uh, it's very useful, especially for some uh, detailed shots of constellations. You can go ahead, watch it. For this part and then i will continue uh, okay uh, photoshop Online and you lizanery, you have normal lizanery machine. Shot some guys never can push normal his millimeter on its links. Lizanera chain of the gold zone, a walk chain of the gold zone. Now, on to my novel line, there's a dash of lizaners, but such a car of a ceramic car, 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 Right, yeah. and and the long telephoto lenses they are mostly used for moon moon shots or the sun sun photography, uh, especially uh, of course when you want to photograph the sun you need to use the special filters in front of the lens, and uh, here I I have to uh, specify that never never ever look to the sun through any camera lens or with your naked eye because it's very dangerous. So you have always you should always use a dedicated specific filters on, to cover the front of your lens uh, in order to be safely photographing the sun. So the long telephoto lenses, which I use, are mostly two, between 200 to 300 millimeter in focal length. And those are best used to capture the details of the moon or the details of the uh, conjunctions of the moon and planets, or sometimes the moon is rising behind mountains or a building, so you can use the long lenses for that purpose. Uh, Okay. <laughs> So then the next important uh, item in, in any astrophotography is that uh, very sturdy, strong tripod. So uh, 
even if you are using a like a, a super expensive lens or camera, if you you don't have a, like a very good tripod, you won't get very good pictures. So having a very good tripod is very very important because it will prevent the picture from being blurry and shaky, and you will create very sharp pictures uh, during the, your astrophotography session. And also, uh, there are some types of carbon fiber tripods, which are very lightweight. They are not so heavy, but they are very strong. So these this carbon fiber tripods are better suited for photographers that they are traveling all the time and they have just, just a backpack so they can walk longer distances without getting tired. so uh, here I'm talking about some interesting subjects, which is also very important. So always inform other people about your location and don't shoot alone. Uh, it's a very good idea to travel with your friends because uh, you have you want to have a pleasant time for your photography and uh, being in a small group will help to uh, be more safe and uh, then the, the, your friends they can help you and you can uh, actually avoid any problems during the night if before we continue we have uh, another two questions yes so not mind um one is asking although if 1.4 allows more light does it provide sharp enough picture than f4 would you please repeat although f1.4 allows more light uh, does it provide sharp enough picture than f4 uh, yeah that's a very good question actually so when we open the aperture of any lens uh, as you know like the lenses, they have different apertures here. Uh, I think you can see these numbers here. Can you see the numbers? Um, not, not so much. Yeah. Here? Yeah, you can see it. OK, see here, you can change the aperture of the lens by turning this. This is an old lens, actually. So in a new digital lenses, actually, uh, this uh, f-stop aperture is not located on the lens, so you do everything inside the camera. But the old lenses, you can actually do it by your hand. So you can turn and you can put the aperture. So when we use uh, op more open apertures like f2 or f2.8, basically uh, there are some things happening in the picture like vignetting or uh, some problems in the corner of the picture. So this happens even with some of the most expensive lenses on the market. Uh, so that's a good idea to close down the aperture for astrophotography for one or two stops. Uh, for example, if your lens has a f-stop of 1.8, it's a very good idea to put the lens on f2 or f2.8 to take the Milky Way pictures, because that way you will get rid of those like a uh, vignetting and all those like problems in the corners of the picture uh women on a dark scene who wants to ask them uh 
թեկուս F մեկ ու չորսը ավելի շատ լույս է հավակում, բեց արդյոք ավելի հստակ պատ գիրատալիս կան F չորսը, ունեմ են պատասխանը այնա, որ դինզաները ունեն ապերտուրան պոխելու հնարովորություն, ապերտուրան դա դինզայի լույս հավակով մակերեստան։ Եվ հիմնականում այդ պոխելով կալյակ մեծացնել, ամենա մեծի վրատնել, բայց այդ ճամանակ ստակությունը նկաների գործնում ենք, որովհետև նույնիսկ այն ամենա թանկանոց լինձաները եզրերի տեպքում դիսավոքելուց պճացնում են նկարը, որոտև այդքան հաստակ չի։ Ու լավ պրակցիկը է և երկու կետով, հա, երկու կետով իչացնել, նու պարցրացնել ապերտուրան, ունեք եթեմ F մեկ ութա, սարգել F երկուս, նոր նկարել մի կամոտ, նոր նկարել ծիր կատին կամ կիշերային տեսահամեր, որպիսի ավելի հստակին։ Okay, so another important thing, if if you are in a larger group, plan around potential issues and having too many tripods, it might cause some problems. So you need to arrange with your friends not to, uh, to be careful, not to put light in your picture, because uh, as you remember, in the first of my speaking, I talked about the red headlights that people are using for night photography. So all of those should be turned off during, during the actual photography process because they will actually cast color uh, like colors in the picture and they will destroy the images and another thing is always arrive at location before the sunset uh, to actually see what's going on in the location if there are some dangerous spots in the desert or i don't know uh, some holes or uh, the trunks of a tree you know on the ground so uh, in the daylight, when you arrive in a location that you have never been before, uh, it will help you to overcome these problems and uh, have a safer night photography session. Uh, մենց կարմիր լիսերով շարժվում են ու մենց գործիպան են ուղում, այդ տաղղա ձեր նկարնալում են չառաջաստան այն պատկերը, որ ձյուց տվեց ու տպոքյուններ են։ Իսկ ինչպես նաև պետք է տեղայնքը հասնել ու դիսկավորվել � սինքն ավելի ճիշտ կլնի, որ ծերեքով անեք է տամին չէ, նոր գիշերը պատրաստեք հենակ լուսանը պարձյան համար։ Ոկ, սո այլ 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 � like manufacturing of the DSLRs and they are manufacturing the mirrorless digitals. And the mirrorless is the world's actually uh, upcoming uh, next generation of, uh, of cameras. So uh, uh, there are some like advantages and disadvantages of each, which I'm not going to any like super details in this right now. Uh, but anyway, you can start your astrophotography with almost any kind of digital uh, camera. And uh, depending on the camera and the lenses that you have, you, you might have some limitations in what you can capture. But uh, uh, as a starter point, you can use a modest digital camera, which is not very expensive. And even these days, you can find them uh, used. You can find used cameras on on online or in the stores, with much cheaper price. And uh, 
as I said, the important thing is that these cameras, they should have the option for uh, 20, 30 second exposure times and, or longer exposure times. And also they have the uh, ability of interchangeable lenses. So you can change the lenses in any case that you want. Uh, you can watch it, John, go ahead and tell this part. Uh -huh. Right. So he, in this slide, actually, you are seeing two different uh, medium format and uh, SLR 135 vintage cameras, the film cameras, which still are used in some of my photography sessions. And uh, if you are interested in film photography, because uh, these are really fun to use for night photography. So if you have time and you have the energy to, to set up the camera and do everything by your hand, you can buy one of these very cheap on the market. They are super cheap and um, uh, you can try like a black and white film or the color film inside and start doing long exposures with them. Uh, is this analog cameras? Yes, these are analog, yeah. Uh, uh, so, uh, there which one is for, the best? For, for, the small, for the small film cameras, I recommend the Olympus cameras because they are very, very like high quality and uh, very lightweight. And for medium format, if, if some people they interested to take higher quality pictures of the night sky, uh, I mean, high, higher quality star trail pictures of the landscape at night, they can use the medium formats like this Mamiya. So, you can shoot six by six, six by seven, six by eight. So these numbers are the are the size of the film. So when I when when I'm saying six by nine, it means each film is six centimeter by nine centimeter, the the big the big size. So when you photograph with these big cameras, you get much much higher quality pictures, which you can print in a very larger sizes. Uh, woman so basically for my personal uh, astrophotography sessions i use my digital cameras for milky way pictures with the landscape or the moon or planet pictures like the conjunction conjunction pictures but for long exposures of the star trails 
I still I prefer to use the film cameras because the 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 result of the photography looks much more natural. Roman, what's in your answer? Can I find something there? Yeah, for sure. I call my this card me. Lusan Kanero, Kapsmati, SLR Kanero, but a first shot at Pavali, Eskarpa, Jam of Lusan Kanero, Ket Kanel, Octopusuma, Analogain, as Jabal Nabos, Apparat Nera, whatever, Nancy Boranke, Chat Pavali. Yeah. No more questions for now? Shall I just continue, right? No. Yeah, continue. Okay. So this is uh, regarding uh, Scott. This is regarding uh, our friend's question that was asking uh, how much is there any unedited pictures? Uh huh. Yeah. This is this is one of the examples that uh, it's unedited and it's right out of the camera. And Pretty nice, is, nice raw image, really. Yeah. Thank you. And this is a hundred thirty millimeter film astrophotography. I used a Kodak uh, hundred ISO positive film for this shot uh, for an exposure time of almost two hours. So one of the advantages of using the film cameras for long star trail photography is that they can capture the the colors of the stars much more natural, and that is because of the. Uh, the 3D dimensional nature of the emo emulsions that actually the, are, the films are made of because the, the films, they have layers of emulsion. So that's why when you uh, capture the stars on film and actually some chemical reactions are happening and on different layers of the film. So it gives kind of more natural looking uh, texture to, to the picture. Uh, sorry, what you John? If it's getting more technical yeah. here, a little bit. <laughs> yeah, uh, it's okay. Roman, as to some color, Photoshop charts to some color, uh, or Arvela has Roman Java Benain, uh, apparently, which of those, uh, how you are assuming, uh, to some color, it's a stats for is that correct? You yeah, it, I, I, the 135, it means that I, I use the, just a 35 millimeter SLR camera, just a small film camera, not the, not the medium format one. Oh, uh, uh, Steph, uh, yeah, that's one thing. Uh, Actually, I have used uh, this uh, small camera to the, to the left. Uh, the, the Olympus one? Yeah, with the Olympus, mm -hmm. right. Ah, Bonajapa, <laughs> So there, there is another difference between the uh, film for film camera lenses and the digital DSLR lenses on the market. So uh, as I said before, the, the, the film cameras are better used for long exposure star trail photography. And but the, there is one problem. The lenses that are for, made for the film cameras, they are not as fast as the digital DSLR lenses. And uh, the fastest lenses on the market are maximum like uh, 3.5 or 2.8 sometimes for medium format cameras. Uh, and so, but whereas like in digital DSLRs, we have lenses up to 1.2 or 1.4 f-stop opening. So that's why I prefer the digitals for Milky Way shots because they have more sensitivity and they can capture 
he sent amazing pictures of the Milky Way in, in a short, like 20 second or 30 second exposure times. But with old lenses, actually, because they are not as fast as the digital lenses, uh, they are much better for slow photography, like doing long exposures for two, three, four hours. Uh, I uh, uh, Point eight. So here you can see two examples of uh, uh, film and uh, digital pictures and uh, long exposure and short exposure shots. So this is exactly what I was talking about. So with uh, on the right picture, which is a picture of a train in Grand Canyon in United States uh, uh, Grand Canyon National Park, uh, I used a fisheye lens, 15 millimeter fisheye lens on a digital camera. And the camera was not a very expensive camera. I mean, it was my older camera, which is now you can get that one for maybe only $200, you know. And uh, I used the high ISO setting on that one. Like uh, I put the ISO setting on 3200 to capture this Milky Way above this train in a very short exposure time. And on the left image, which is in Iran, in, it's a very old church in the border with Turkey in Iran. Uh, this is done with a medium format vintage camera and the time was, the exposure time was almost two hours for this one. Beautiful. Yeah, very beautiful. Yeah, uh, Uraman, uh, is that place to make itself to watch Rusama Karnerum, and then for Jimasin for Sumaying. Zafmasumbiyerkar <laughs> Um, what what was the ex exposure time for the right one? For the Change. for the train picture. Yes. Yeah, it was like almost thirty seconds. Ah, not yet. As soon as I came, I just went and got that watch for me. But I shot a young camera. I was but lovely in the picture. So the the light in the pictures, these two pictures, the lighting is from uh, nearby. Uh, buildings or the villages, you know, so I didn't put any other light myself. So all the light that is here is just available light in the environment. Yeah. So here, I want to just talk a little bit more about the f-stops for night photography. So f2, if we have a lens with an f opening of uh, f2, 
it is best used for very very dark locations and when we want or when we want to do like shorter exposure times so we set the aperture on f2 on the lens f2.8 um, is the most common used in any type of uh, astrophotography and f4 is used when you only have the option for using a, a slow lens or when the foreground is too out of focus uh, F um, focus it to so, yeah. so you mean we want to get a foreground out of focus? Yeah, for example, for example, uh, you want to take a picture of a tree with the background of the stars. So when you use the f2.8, uh, that tree, depending on the lens that you are using, if you are using like a longer focal length lens, like 50 millimeter or I don't know, like 35 millimeter lens. And if, if you are using an f-stop of two or 2.8, the tree might look like auto focus in the foreground. Because, because actually I will talk about the, how to focus on the stars in later slides, but uh, in general, what we do in night photography is that first we should focus on the stars. Only we focus on the stars in any picture. So we, if you have any foreground in, in the shot, like, like a train or a tree or, I don't know, a building or a flower, you know, everything. If we use the f2.8, that flower or building will look out of focus. In order to bring it more in focus, we can put the f-stop on f4, you know. So that's, that's the reason that uh, we can use the f4 to get more better focus on the foreground objects. Ramen, Santiria, and Anama, or yet for make Lusana Kareng, Tatus, F. Arabel Cham, F. Arabel Cham, but the Pum is to Arashna Potkere, Pelini, Avelila Hosvats, Yetna Potkiri at Hamatas, or that make him not make focus, the Nomak Yetna Potkiri, Astra Rivera, Nomakarum, yet yet a make testament for. Arashna Patkira focuses to some and Petka F. Harabel Tuna Metas Tank, Nakev Chosi Depum, Avet Punana Kavali, the Stak Patkes, Arashna Patkiri Hamusha, Martu Zari from Zariki. So that's why some, some, there are some photographers that they use photo stacking techniques in Photoshop or other photo editing softwares in order to create a very, very well focused picture of the night sky. So what they are doing is that they take the first picture with the focus on, on a tree in the foreground, and then they take they take two or three more shots with different focusings on, on the same spot with the same location. They take two, three more pictures with different focusings on different objects. And at the end, they have a picture of the, of the stars in focus. And then in the in Photoshop or in the editing software, they, they put all these pictures together to create a Completely focused image. Gam Sam Karishnesh was Octagotuman stacking. Idar Bradanelu and a carnal Idar Bradanelu technology, Vori Jotov, Vorgon Sananum, Ramaskus Bin Nakarman Astain Fona, Eto Focus of Pokuman. Arashna Patkiri Bra, Nakzari Bra, at a focus of Pokman, Kichaveli, Peru, Begneri Bra, Sari Bra, Yevunanaman, Polos, Zutunerov, a stack focus of Nakar, at a photoshop of Vida Brand, at Tarbish Nakarnere, Katrum, the Nomad Vida Bra, Stanaman, Polo, which never focuses as Sanakar. The other important thing is that uh, I always recommend to use the prime lenses. What I mean by prime lenses is the fixed focal length lenses. So like 
only 15 millimeter or only 24 lens or only 20 lens rather than a zoom lens because the zoom lenses they have so many uh, glass elements in them so and uh, also usually the prime lenses the fixed focal length lenses they have better quality in in picture yes in chapter for prime lenses prime nakatuni vor focal heraboluchuna kizaketain heraboluchuna lenzai fixvatsa inka zoom chi ais inka chi pokum kam 15a kam 30a fixvats tiva lenzai focusain heraboluchuna uraman tarbelutsuna vor nat vor zoom anu lenzanere shat apakia tarer unen dia mech vore patatsnum an lusanakari voraka Okay, this is one of my classic uh, pictures, which I really love myself. I mean, uh, 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 I, I, I can I could never repeat this picture anymore because uh, especially with the night photography, every shot can be a unique picture. And uh, the things that are happening in night photography, they can't be repeated over time. And uh, so this one, I did it in Iran. It's in the middle of the desert uh, in central parts of Iran. And the, use, I used the film camera for this shot, uh, the medium format, uh, big camera, six by nine format. And uh, I did the almost three and a half hour exposure time for this shot. So during this exposure, I just went in my sleeping bag and uh, I just slept because it, the weather was very cold and I couldn't stand the whole time outside, you know. So I went in my sleeping bag you know, in a village house, which there was no heater and there was nothing, just an abandoned, ruined place, you know. <laughs> and it was freezing cold. And uh, I waited for these three, four hours to end up this ex exposure time. And uh, the most important thing about this picture is what I actually I want to specify on this shot is that uh, paying paying very close good attention to to the composition of the picture which can which can make any image uh, unique and uh, like eye catching you know so as you see there is this uh, i pointed my camera to the north where you can see the north star or the polaris the center of the circles is the north star and the, or the polaris, which shows the direction of the north. So when you turn your camera at night to this section of the sky, you can get this kind of circular star trails or in astrophotography world, they call it circumpolar, like uh, star trail photography. And uh, so you, it, it creates very graphical, interesting image. Uh, what I did is that I tried to put the North Star as close as to the top of the tree to create more powerful uh, compositional uh, image. Uh, um, Astalusan Kartsan Mage. As the Kara starts Fella Vitajain, a camera of Nitsam, Mot Yerek Yerek Jam, Pahajan Mof, for in Tatsum, Oshina, Satsburg, and her term Chatsute, Canela is Canela Parky Macham, Parky, Canela Parky Mage, Canela, to the Quats Shinsan Mage. Whichever <laughs> Very 
Lurinak, uh, Lurinak Lusamgar. Very impressive. Yeah, thank you. So I just want to um, talk about like how we can do these kind of photographs with digital cameras because I, I'm pretty much sure that it might be the question of most of the participants in, in this workshop. Uh, so basically there are two ways, two different methods to do it, to do this shot with your digital camera. So the, the first uh, technique is to do the same, the same technique that you are doing as like time-lapse photography. So as you have seen in documentary, like uh, channels like National Geographic, these uh, movies of the fast changing clouds and like the sunset, sunrises, the transitions between the, from the uh, light to the night, you know. So all these types of uh, shots, they are done um, on a tripod and you have to take at least 500 or 600 pictures with one second interval. I mean, there should be one second gap between each, each shot. And the, the whole duration will be almost three or four hours to create these uh, 600 frames. And then in the Photoshop or in the uh, time uh, star trail editing softwares, which if you search on the, if you Google, there are two or three free versions that uh, dedic there are dedicated softwares that they can actually put all these five, 600 pictures together and create these uh, streaks of the stars. So this is one of the ways to do that. So uh, Washington, you can translate this section and then I will do the next. Okay. Roman, can you ask us to ask you to ask us to ask us to ask us to ask Pass up from Mr. Inchpeska, Ilia, on a SPC to Sana Corner, Naev, Twain, the Sapatic Nedio Kunchal, Women Twain, the Sapatic Nedio Kum, Petka Mivarkianos, Paul Jamedov, Kotare Mikani, Harus to Sana Corner, Eto, Et to Sana Corner, Hot Zagreti Mijotov, Ilerfren, the Hotel Boom, who starts Mua Elina Manatip. Namonatip, Lusana Gar, Episit Ragres, Pats Hassan, Lucian Karnik, Hanihat, Yervi Oshina Bertram has dedicated the Tau Sika. We have questions. Yes. <coughs> okay. Question from Povanes Star threads in the center of the image uh, seem to be in front of the tree. What can be the reason? Uh, uh, sorry, would you please repeat? In, star threads in the center of the image seems to be in the front of the tree. What what is the reason? Oh, for that? oh, that's a very they nice question. Looking, yeah. Looking so yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, that's that's a question for almost everyone that sees this, this picture because, uh, as I said, there are some crazy stuff going on in night photography. You know, even sometimes uh, you might take some pictures that they look like ghosts in the picture. You know. <laughs> So anyway, uh, this is because because of the wind, because the, the, the night that I was taking this picture, it was very windy, you know, and uh, the, the it has moved some of the branches of the tree. And that's why it looks like that the stars are in front of the tree, not behind the tree. Yeah, <laughs> In fact, uh, if I want to explain better, I can, I can do this. So uh, let's uh, consider, for example, you, you are in a center of a very crowded city, uh, like downtown Los Angeles, you know, and uh, you want to take a architectural picture of a building. And there are so many people just walking in front of your camera in the daylight or in the, in the evening, like when the sun sets, you know, any, any time. So there are some techniques that you can take some pictures in that situation that 
surprisingly, it will show no one, no single person in your picture. So one of the techniques of long, long exposure photography actually is used to do these kind of shots where there are so many people and you don't want that people in your picture. So, so when you increase the exposure time, because of the movement of the people, they will disappear in the picture. They, they won't be recorded. Ուրեմն այսպիսի հետաքրքիր տեխնիկա կա երկար պահանջամա կարելի է օգտագործել նույնիսկ քաղաքային լուսանկարչան համար երբ որ դուք ուզում եք օրինակի չորշենքի ճարտարապետությունը ֆիքսել, հա, դուք չեք ուզում որ մարտիկ հայտնվեն ձեր պատկերի մեջ ու կարող եք երկար պահանջամ դնել թույլ թույլ ISO-ի դեպքում ու այդ ընթացքում երբ որ դույսը հավաքվում է մարտիկ կանցնեն ուրեմն նկարի միջով ու ոնց որ իրանք հետ իրանք չեն երևա վերջնական ուսանկարի մեջ ոնց որ հոգիների պես երևան իրանք so so this is exactly the same thing that that is happening in this picture of this tree with the stars because because of the wind the wind actually moved the branches of the tree and so they disappeared some parts of the tree the branches disappeared because of the wind and that's why the stars they look like they are in front of the tree ունենալ այս տեղ տեղի ունեցել է ծառի դեպքում ծառը քամին ծառին շարժել է ու մենք տեսնում ենք որ որոշ ճուղեր նույնիսկ չեն երևում որովհետև իրանք այդ հոգի պես են երևում հա ու տեղի շարժվել են ու այդ ընթացքում լուսանկարվել Perfect. one complete picture. Okay. Um, yeah. So her question is that if we can take such a picture with the continuous exposure time without doing the interval photography. Yes, I mean, it's, it is possible, but I don't recommend it because um, digital cameras, they are made of electronics. So all the, like the circuits and the boards and electronics in the camera, you know, uh, when they operate for a long time, they, they, they warm up and they get heated, you know? So that's why it will give kind of damage to the, damage to the camera if, if you want to do like the whole, like two hour of exposure, just one single exposure with digital cameras. But the other method that I can recommend to overcome this problem is that you can take like two or three separate exposures, each exposure for 15 or 20 minutes. And then you can put these three exposures together in Photoshop. So this is the, this is the second method that you can actually do a uh, long a, a start start trail photography with digital uh, DSLRs. Uh, դրվում որովհետև երկար պահաժամերը տաքացնում են թվային տեսախցիկները ու իրանք կարող են չացնեն հենց հենց տեսախցիկին նաև լուսանկարը որովհետև էլեկտրոնիկայից է բաղկացած ու էլեկտրոնիկան երկար աշխատելու ցտականում է բայց փոխարենը ինչ կարելի անել կարելի է ոչ թե պահել 3 ժամ պահաժամը այլ օրինակ անել 20 րոպե 20 րոպե մի քանի հատ այդպիսի բաժանի ցուցանկարներ անել հետո 3 կամ 4 ցուցանկար է իրականացնել ինչպես կարելի է փորձել Thanks Okay that Perfect No more questions at this point No more questions Yeah thanks Okay So I already talked about the fast lenses versus slow lenses Let me go to the next slide Okay, so uh, another uh, important thing I want to add here for the tripods is the ball head, the selection of the ball head. So 
uh, I already, already talked about the carbon fiber tripods, which are more lightweight and stronger for backpackers that people, they want to travel in the mountains or the villages, you know, but the, the right, if you see a ball head. So let me see if I have it here. So like here, I have a ball head, this, this part. This part is called a ball head. So the ball head actually is very useful in, uh, especially night photography, uh, uh, because I have seen so many photographers, they bring tripods in the outdoors, which they have these uh, two, three handles, you know, and those tripods are better used for video work, not photography work. And uh, it's having those handles, you know, it, it's very distracting and disturbing sometimes, especially when you want to uh, actually uh, photograph some objects that are high in the sky. And when you want to like point your camera like this, you want to tilt upwards to the sky. So, those will be much harder to use with the handles, but these bolt heads, they are super easy to operate. So, and it, you can turn the camera to all different di directions without any trouble. Robin, my course, I think, a lot of the other things are in the same way, I think, is that you are not in Yerodano Garbo Tamas Nelikos, it's in course, Tetev Yerodan Garbo and Yerodan Malishot of the Harbon and Jonah Kosman Jamana, who not was empty, inch Keltik Keltike Harma with Tabotel, Yerodano Vera Tavatrelu Omar, or an uncan SPC Kendazev Kendazev. Kerkitner, Borong, Bosch, and our Lutonentalis, the Sakitikin, Shashwell, Polar Lutonero, Gan Naev, Pernak Medov, Kerkitner, Yarotano, Borong, Imnagan, Napatis, and Vision, and Tarek Omar, which they photo on the Homar, Borong, Astralis and Gats and Depun, Panga, and Luen, and Kuzman, here can keep all of Maserum, Hass and Lutonon and Ank, but or not. Shot very funny to the Pumet Pernakner, Governor Smith Concrete, Ramar Karakuranan, Tisht, Gurman Kalkikain, Yarotamu, Gurman Halmaran. Thank you, Vachik Jan. I know sometimes it's difficult to translate. <laughs> no worries. <laughs> okay, so essential accessories for night photographers. So I already talked about the red headlights, which is very important. And I talked about the importance of preserving the dark adaption. Uh, having, having a spare battery is very important for night photography because, because during the night photography, uh, especially in cold weather, when you are photographing in winter or in the desert, the battery will be finishing very soon. So you need to always keep a spare battery in your packet. And spare battery, not, not only for the camera, but for all the equipment that you are using. You have to have all the spare batteries. And uh, uh, yeah, go ahead for this well, part. I mean, uh, and the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the uh, the Garmis, Luisel Masin, Kirkin Hakswog, Naev, Anajist, and Anajist, Mark Putnet, or whatever he kishere, he nakam Turtalino, Turtiana Nerin, Litumain, Mark Putnesh, or Tarak, Pitskatafum, who watch me and Lusan Kachakan Aparati, I'll naev, use borders, electron, electronized Arkady Hammer, and Stamanel, the Ratsich, Mark Putnesh, or Pisiara, so this. Uh... Another important item for night photographers is the cable release or the remote control, which comes in uh, two, three different types and every like uh, camera company, they have their own system. And also you can get the cheaper versions online you know, or in other like stores. But anyway, one of the advantages of using the cable releases is to prevent uh, shaking 
uh, in the camera and you can get uh, more like detailed images and uh, reducing the vibration in the, in the shot. And also for that time-lapse photography that I just mentioned, you you have to you have one of these in order to control the number of the exposures and the the time gap between each shot. So basically, you are, you are doing all that stuff with, by using these uh, cable releases. But but in some cameras, you can do that internally. I mean, you can do inside the camera to set up the number of the exposures and also the interval of each shot. Hajot Karebos Sarko Petronanata Herakaravarman Bonaman. Herakaravarman Bonaman. Now, whatever Karalini Tom Zarif Herava, Tom Lavo Piazro, he must Sarah Naya was Karwanaka Karavarel, Uleman Amin Hajot Kadre Rijamanaka, when Sahman Karavana Bonakira, who are part of. Lusana Kaluma, Jamanak, Inchi Cheng, Mens Abaratizano, Lusana Kanera, Borovetev, Pokers, Vibrationere, or Chastamen, Lobozumen, Patkire, Yerker Pajam, Jamanak, Samar and Paiman Nominal, SPC Sarker, Patsi Dranitskaya, Sarker Mijazov, Uleman Nahopes, Nahopes. Great tech honey, Lusanakarani, each Jamana came by the Sampani, Lusanakani, each Kampa, Jamuvani, Chistakan, Kan Tesakatik Nervo, for a special Nahapes car, the Ahmed, the Patrel, or Serakari Kitchka, Patsy Nakanum, Petka Kansarka. Right. So this was the end of this uh, presentation with this picture, which is a self portrait of me and the stars and the moon. Actually, it's a moon and the planet Jupiter. And uh, so uh, I don't know how much time do we have, Scott, because uh, I have another presentation, which I can do it. Uh, maybe if I get a break, uh, take a break, like for <laughs> three, four minutes, have a cup of coffee, you know. Yeah, or we can do it in, at uh, we can bring you back on for another program. So oh, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. I can do that. Yeah, and that allows time for people to digest yeah, nice. it and yeah. everything. There is another question though. Uh, he says, when doing long exposure photography, do you get vignetting problems on your film? And if you do, how do you fix it? Do you take flats to fix the vignetting? Now, he's talking about film. Uh, yes, yes. He might be also just talking about a sensor. So maybe you can answer both questions here. Yes, uh, we can take uh, flats to get rid of those like uh, errors, you know. But but in like in raw processor of the Photoshop, the, the we have some good options to reduce those uh, errors in any kind of lens. So me, I personally, I use the Photoshop lens correction. Uh, filter to correct that those errors on the corners of the image. Uh, uh, Java Benain, Lusana Carnera, Photoshop in Jotso, Archok Narola, Herald Snail, at Linzai Effect Nera, Yes Jerry Prasana Carneri, Pata Summers, or Ayok Narola, Shatrista, and Kansra Kres, Volmichotso, at Linzai Effect Nera, Yes Jerry Prats, Karia, Homer. And uh, I want to read another comment. Okay. Um, about about the translator about me that uh, yeah that's uh, uh, got, the translator uh, did a great job <laughs> yes, yes. yes. Thank, thank you so much job. yeah i know but, you know because uh, it's, it's really hard to tell the technical my, terms like in uh, different languages yeah. you know so uh you, you did a great job my first attempt it was yes. my first attempt to translate <laughs> uh, but live translation awesome. Yeah, but uh, it helped me that I know a little bit technically about the photography of Night Star, so that's that's why I can translate. 
Right. Yeah. Uh, so thank you very much, Oshin, for your presentation. It was very informative and detailed. Women should not call to me high term or Oshin Nekayatset. Satakis present that ten, yet a gun heart says, all of them heart said in, yet a gun, I'm saying, poker most of it, yes. And uh, I just want to just uh, tell that if anyone has further questions, they can just uh, send me a message on my Instagram, or uh, I can more than I'm more than happy to answer all the questions. And my Instagram is OshinZak, O S H I N Z A K. Oh, I will tell Z you. A K. Okay. Z A K. Mm -hmm. Ocean Zach. Yet a heart says, uh, to make a spine, but said a guy in a heart says, I'll Instagram. Yes, Graham. Ocean Zach. Yes. Okay. Um, And then I so, want to uh, thank, I thank Scott for organizing this event and uh, you, Rajik John, for the great job on translation. And uh, uh, the storm was, was a very, very interesting event to meet you all guys over there. And uh, I hope that it will be repeated in the future. Yes, absolutely. Uh, and um, I wanted to add something, Scott, a little bit because of presentation on my side. Sure. Uh, I can share my screen. Um, can you can you see the screen? Yes. Uh -huh. You might want to bring it into presentation mode. Um, I think Perfect. I will, I will uh, do the presentation in Albanian or, or should I in English? No, it's good. It's good. Okay, let me do it both. <laughs> uh, so I want to tell a little bit about our organization for, for uh, people joining us uh, online uh, from US or other country. Um, <clears throat> as some special financing to each so Specia is an online store uh, which uh, which is selling uh, telescopes and other uh, accessories uh, regarding to it uh, science uh, books uh, games and so many things you can check uh, on our website, but also we have uh, sections uh, for uh, science popularization and uh, uh, developing the, the uh, community here in Armenia. Uh, so uh, this is uh, our online shop, you can check it uh, for the telescopes. And uh, this is this is the blog that we are writing uh, content for easy language, uh, easy understanding with easy language, understanding language, um, uh, writing in Armenian. I start asking Hara Machili 
stuck on uh, Mary Mossing, Clover uh, Kite Select, Special Parasmet Get Home Slash Blow, uh, Artal. Yeah, we do consulting for uh, telescopes to uh, raise, uh, raise knowledge about uh, using telescopes and observing night night sky. We organize uh, astro tours uh, to go to darkest uh, places in Armenia to, to watch the night sky with uh, different telescopes, uh, deep sky objects, uh, planets, and also watch meteor showers, uh, having great time, uh, campfire, star talks, uh, photography sessions as well. Uh, so basically two days ago, we went to one of the darkest places in Armenia, one wild source, uh, Tatanai monastery here, and uh, could uh, observe deep sky objects with uh, one of Scott's uh, telescopes, 10 inch Dobsonian telescopes. It was uh, very fantastic. Make now we can instrument astro fresh, we have some equipment as done it all fresh. Mood fighters, you have a hot on my kick up in there. Or the other one of the Molorakneri, and the best now. Astrobsan Karstjan, Mosina Kosum, Kaskalia Nail, Chuk, Kalia Nail, Kaskalia Natale, Astra Taperija Monak, Mijotsarum Nail, whatever Havakum, Yerkum, Rahan, Hachanaki, Kanskasun, and I have Kishrain Yerkin in Kalman. Also, we do outreach events uh, like to talk about science uh, in front of general public, inspire kids to do, to do science, to watch the night sky, uh, to, to uh, promote the education of the scientific part, and also to engage uh, people uh, for, for amateur astronomy. Uh, so one of the big events that we together with uh, Explore Scientific uh, organized was uh, the Garni Star Gazing uh star party star party Barney. and uh, during the star party we had many uh, guests like uh, jim balia uh, guests from uh, uh, astronomy magazine and uh, many many other other people were watching to the stars with with big, big telescopes uh, also having a great time uh, live session of music and uh, all about art, science, and stars. Uh, uh, astronomy magazine is here. We have other kids not coming. We have So after the star uh, we we uh, had a cooperation with uh, Explore Scientific officially. So now we. Uh, have telescopes from from Explore Scientific in our shop. Uh, very very big and decent telescopes that uh, can help to to observe the deep sky objects. Uh, very high quality. <laughs> so Star Museum at home and Explore Scientific had some. 
Operația, am avut acțiuni, am avut și ce am avut, am avut acțiuni, am avut acțiuni, am avut So this was uh, all about my presentation. If you have a question, uh, yeah, you can reach me out with these contacts or you can ask me now. Thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, Here we go. Do we have questions? Um. I don't see any on the uh, social media channels. Uh, perhaps there's some from your group here uh, on Zoom. Okay. Uh, we missed storms a lot already. Okay. <laughs> yes. Would you recommend any filters for shooting from light polluted cities like Yerevan, anything which works against variety of lights? What kind of filters? Yeah, there are some. Uh, you know, actually, the nebula filter or the, the light pollution filters. Let me see which ones. Uh, I think Scott will be uh, more informative about this. Yeah, we have. Um, we carry some um, filters from Optolong uh, that is also available through Space Shop Forty Two. Um, but uh, you know there are. There are uh, filters called like the L Enhance. You know, these are tri band type of filters. You can get them uh, to thread onto the front of a camera lens. Uh, of course, you can get them also to attach to astro cameras, you know, if that's what you have. Um, but uh, yeah, I think that the focus of this whole presentation was DSLR photography. And um, uh, so, uh, you know, but uh, you will be amazed at what you can do also in image processing uh, to help uh, eliminate some of these problems as well. Uh, filters uh, do are much more amazing now than they were 20 years ago. Um, uh, so there, there are, uh, um, uh, but there's a comment right here. Are there filters for LED light pollutions? Are LED light pollution's frequencies too broad to filter out? Uh, again, it comes down to you can suppress these things to a degree, okay? You can do some more with image processing, and you can do the best you can do, okay? Uh, but nothing replaces a really dark sky. And so this is why uh, it's important to encourage your local communities, your neighbors, yourself, okay? to start to eliminate light pollution. It really does belong, uh, or it really does, uh, the responsibility is starts with yourself, you know. Have you put on the right color of lights around your home? Uh, are you putting uh, full cut off shields around outdoor lighting? You know, if you're doing it, then it makes it a little easier to ask your neighbor to do it. And if you're asking your neighbor to do it, it's easier to get your neighborhood to do it and so on, you know, until you're to the point where you're asking community leaders, uh, government leaders to start using uh, proper lighting. LED lights, uh, especially the blue spectrum uh, of lights uh, from LEDs are quite harmful, not just for astrophotographers, but for nature itself. And in fact, this is where the greatest harm is. Um, and blue lights in particular, uh, are are terrible for uh, human health. And yeah. so um, there's a lot to read about it. Uh, a lot of people are not aware that hypertension, uh, you know, anxiety, uh, uh, cancer, <laughs> all kinds, <laughs> all kinds of illness, okay, can arrive from just having the wrong color of light, okay? So, um, and too much of it. Pe people do need darkness. 
Yeah, yeah. translate that. Go ahead. Very I'm important, check. important message. Yeah. We have a hard to deliver message. There may be a large amount of other relevant aspects of the situation. Do we have? Can't always. We have to be fresh. We have to be fresh. To sign up with what something international coach men L enhanced the people fresh trans pictures of Kylie of the man all that will call kind of so so that means the car will come no in this night to show one up by it's the heart care to share in your country car can reach her or what you want to keep up on the era come to share in your country you are that's proposed to match also gosh and women what does not do to know or make to make me that was our return home ours that has said mezzanines for the patrol how about that's going to solve it soon what we see think to be very very big and think uh it's all a guy to you just making sure and uh sure i'm getting care نه این چیزی که هر یک آن دلیل تیم پاناس اول از نیم پوزیشن که لیت ناب پات است ماتو پس که ایرادی هر که ویرا بریم ما تنا تنا این پیش سوالشون ها تو وقتی میکردیم میک سپر من تنی وقتی سوالشون میاد درانس پاس نکرده هر کی پاس رانه دم پیش من چیم کار نکرده چیپا چیپا نکرده نه اف لیسی گوید نشاد کاری بوده کابوت لیس شد پارس کم شد پتان گاوره اینچ پس اصل اصل سنت کاریش نری هم باش پس از ماه ماه تو هم ماه تو آرتش هم هم باش تابش تابش زیبی کار از دی کابوت لیس ته هو که بانورن ته هنگ فیزیک کابس کاوارو چست من نه فکر کرد که راین وابیتون نیست Ու նրոցը ասան, որ անկաղ վիտրելից կարելի են այվ իհարկե ուսանակարսությունը անել և հետո Հոտոշոպի ոպնությամբ հանել կաղկային ուսավորությունը դա էլ անմարովուր։ Ակեի, դու մի հավ մոր կվեսյունս? I don't think so. I think that we are... I just uh, answered one of the questions in the chat room, but if you want, I can explain it. Oh, that would be a good idea. Yeah. So uh, one of our friends asked that uh, why you became like uh, why you chose to be an astrophotographer. So so basically, when I was uh, 15, 16 years old, I was just bicycling in, near my house after my school, you know. And uh, I came across a newsstand with with all these magazines, you know. And there was this uh, Nojum, the Persian uh, astronomy magazine, the first issue of that magazine in that newsstand, which uh, uh, grabbed my attention. And I just went through the pages, and there was a two-page article in that first issue of that magazine, which was about how to take pictures, basic pictures with film cameras of the stars. So. That short article changed the whole my life and, and it set the first stone for my whole career in my life. So that's why I then became like a, a astrophotographer after that. But but I had the background of art in my like history because before I became a photographer, I used to paint and I was a painter. Հարցում է ամեր թե ինչուրը ուշին է, որ ուշին տարվում է աստվածում կարիչ, ուշին պատասխանեց, որ կյանքամ ընտեսել է աժուրնալում, թե աստվածության ընկարծության նկարներ և հետարից հետաքրքրվելով սկսել է ուշկալվել, բայց նաև � Հոշինի նաև հարվեստով ասկողում, թերով բարշ հասվատուսանկարսունը այդյան հետակրսկրել է շոտ առդիշը։ Ակե, so I think we can finish our broadcasting. Thank you very much 
Sure, thank you. I want to thank uh, I want to a great presentation and to you, Scott, for organizing this this event for your time and effort uh, to do this uh, multicasting. Thank you. Yeah, and to inspire our our uh, local community to start uh, visual and uh, astrophotography. By the way, watching John, I really want to travel again to Armenia to do more photography with you guys. Yeah, you are welcome, Oshin. We will we will become a little bit professional when you arrive so, to take some some pictures with you. Yeah, sure. Okay. All right. Well, I should not some bowling. Go ahead. No, I just wanted to thank you, Vachik, for doing the translation and arranging from your side to get this very nice audience. And uh, um, we hope that uh, this has been a contribution, positive experience for Space Shop 42 and, uh, and for your audience there in Armenia. Uh, for other people watching around the world right now, uh, we want to thank you for tuning in on our social media channels. Uh, next uh, program will be uh, the workshop num uh, number two. This is a four-part series, as I, as I told you, and uh, uh, we will be focusing on planets and uh, uh, planetary photography, which is, again, a whole different uh, uh, way to do astrophotography. And um, so it's going, to, it's going to be interesting, and we'll have a great speaker, I promise. So... Um, and uh, yeah, Okay. All right. Thanks very much, everyone. And uh, we will see you next week. We'll be posting the time and everything to uh, make sure that you can get tuned in at the right time. So take care and keep looking up. Keep looking up. <laughs> Finally, tonight, finally tonight, I would like to say that we will have the Global Star Party, uh, which we have on Tuesday nights. Uh, it will start at 6 o'clock Central or zero hours uh, universal time. And so uh, we have uh, a lineup of the incredible speakers. One of them, uh, at least one of them is actually in the audience right now. So um, I am uh, uh, very excited uh, with this group um, and you should uh, tune in to one of our social media channels that you might be watching right now uh, to, um, uh, to experience this. So. Until that time, thank you very much and take care. Uh, it was central time. Uh, 6 p.m. 6 p.m. central and zero uh, hours midnight uh, universal 6 time. 6 p.m. Uh, p.m. central. Uh, uh, in Yerevan time. 2 p.m. Yeah, four, four in the morning. Four oh, a.m. Yeah. <laughs> okay, we will okay. watch, watch the later recording, I guess. Yeah, <laughs> set your alarms. <laughs> All right, take care. Thanks again, Vachek. Bye bye. And bye. you too, Vachek. Thank you, bye. thank you. Have a good thank time. You. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you.